This video continues with the review of the Law of Indices. The review appears in the playlist on complex numbers because it is important that you have a firm understanding of the Law of Indices in order to be able to manipulate complex numbers using indices. And this is something we'll be coming on to once we've finished looking at the general Law of Indices that are covered in this video and some of the preceding ones in this playlist on complex numbers numbers. Consider this, you can see within the brackets we are taking the rth root of the base a. Outside the brackets you can see we have the power p. So this p is raising the brackets to the power of p and within the brackets we're taking the rth root of the base of a. Now we can rewrite this as shown here. You can see within the brackets I'm raising a to the power of 1 divided by r. Now this is another way of showing us how we can find the rth root of the base a and was shown in a previous video. And then if you look at the brackets you can see we're raising that to the power of p. Of course here you can see a has been raised to this power and then the brackets are then raised to a power. And when this is the case you can multiply the indices. Again this was shown in a previous video. So we can rewrite this as shown here and you can see that the a is raised to the 1 divided by the r and that is multiplied by the P. Now when the 1 divided by the R is multiplied by the P what we will get is shown here A raised to the P divided by the R because this P multiplied the 1 on the top to give us the P here and of course the R remains on the bottom. Alternatively you can write this as shown here where we have A raised to this power where you can see the P is divided by the R. Both of these are essentially the same thing they just written down slightly differently. Let's now go on to consider this example here. Here we're raising the base a to the power of p and then we're taking the rth root of the a raised to the power. Now we can rewrite this as shown here. You can see that I have taken the a to the p and I've put it in brackets and here you can see I'm raising the brackets to the power 1 divided by r. Now this here is telling me that I'm taking the rth root of the contents of the bracket. So here you can see the base a is raised to a power and then we can see we include the brackets and show that the entire entire thing is then raised to another power and when this is the case we know we have to multiply the indices that you can see here. So I can rewrite this as shown here and you can see I am multiplying together the indices. Of course when you complete this multiplication what you will see is this a raised to the power p divided by r and we can rewrite this to look like this where a is raised to this power where the p is divided by the r. It is worth noting that these two are different but when you follow the law of the indices you can see we end up with the same answer here. If you look at this one you take the root first and then you raise to the power whereas if you look at this one you raise to the power first and then take the root. So let's consider the following. When you see this, this is telling us one of two things. This is telling us we're taking the power of a and this is telling us we take the root of a. And the order in which we do it doesn't really matter because if you look here you can see I'm taking the root of a first and then I'm raising all of that to the power p. Whereas here I'm raising a to the power of p first and then taking the root. Let's consider this with respect to a concrete case. Here you can see I've got a base of 4 and I'm taking the square root of it and then I'm cubing the contents of the brackets. Now I can show this as shown here and you can see that the square root of 4 has been put here as its value namely 2 and then of course you can see I'm taking the power of the brackets where this is 3 here meaning I'm going to be cubing the contents of the brackets and of course I can write that out like this. You can see that the 2 is wrote down 
three times where they're all then multiplied together. And of course, when you perform this calculation, you will get the value of 8. Let's now consider this example here. And I'm going to use a concrete case for this example and here is the concrete case and on this occasion you can see that I'm taking the same base of 4 but I'm cubing that first and then I'm taking the square root whereas here I took the square root first and then cubed it so I can rewrite this as shown here I've taken the 4 to the 3 and I've expanded it within the root symbol to 4 times 4 times 4. And here you can see I still got the little 2, meaning I'm taking the square root of this lot. Of course, I now can rewrite this as shown here. I've got 64 within the root because that's what you get when you multiply this lot together. And of course, you can see that I'm taking the square root because of this little 2. And the square root of 64, you should know, is 8. So we can see that these both equal 8. So it is acceptable for me to write the following down to say that this is equal to this because both of them equal 8. So these concrete examples are showing us that you can take the root and then raise that to the power, or you can take the power and then take the root. They both will give you the same result, and in this case they give the same result of 8. So we know that if we have this, it can be rewritten as shown here, and we can further rewrite that as a raised to the power of p divided by r, and it is often better to express this as shown here, a raised to this, where the p is divided by the r. In this video, we showed the following concrete example, where this can be shown to be equal to this, and we can go on further and say that we can write this as 4 to the power 3 divided by 2, which may be better written, as you can see here, 4 to this power, where we have the 3 divided by the Two. Now the number in this position, which is the 2, is telling us we're taking the root of the 4. And in this case, because it's 2, it's the square root. And this is telling us we are cubing the 4. So when you look at this type of power, you have to realize that the number on the top is raising the base to the power, and the number at the bottom is taking the root. Now, regardless as the order in which you perform the tasks, i.e. take the root first and then the power, or the power first and then the root, you will see in all of these cases, you will end up with the value of 8. Consider the Python program coming into view. If you look to the first line, you can see that I am importing the math module because I wish to use the square root function here in the computer. Program. These three lines set the variables a, r, and p to 4, 2, and 3 respectively to reflect the values that are shown here. If we consider this program statement, we're printing this calculation where you can see I'm using the square root function that was defined in the math module. Here you can see I'm taking the square root of a, where a has been assigned 4 on this line, and then we're raising that result, whatever it may be, to the power of p. If we move on to this line, we can see that it's printing this calculation, which is reflecting this here. Because if you look at it, a is being raised to the power of p, and then, of course, we're taking the square root. So what this will be doing is actually this calculation when you take into account the values that have been assigned to A and P as shown on these lines. This line is printing this calculation, and you should see that this calculation is reflecting this here, because we're raising A to the power of the P divided by the R. So when we consider these three lines, we should be able to see that this calculation is reflecting this, this calculation is reflecting this, and this one is reflecting this here. And in all of these three cases, you can see that the result is 8. So if I execute this program, we should see that the result of each of the print statements will show the value of 8. So let's have a look at the runtime for this computer program. 
And there you can see in all three cases we get 8, albeit there in the format of a float, but the value is 8 nonetheless. If we consider the key points for this video, we know if we see this a raised to the power of p divided by r, which we can rewrite as shown here, a to the power of p divided by r, we will be able to perform the following. We can do the root first and then take the power, or we can take the power and then take the root. So if we wanted to carry this calculation out in Python, which implies either this or this calculation, then we achieve that as shown by the text coming into view now. A raised to the power of P divided by R. And you can see I've put the brackets there to ensure that the P divided by R is calculated first. So this is how we represent in Python this here. Please note, if you wish to perform this calculation in Python, there is no need to import the math module because there is no need to use the square root function as illustrated in the last slide. This can be done using the core features of the Python language because this is an operator and this here is an operator. Now I've nearly come to the end of looking at the law of indices within this playlist on complex numbers and you will have noted that I have put the law of indices in the playlist on complex numbers because if we're going to really get a handle on complex numbers a knowledge of indices is important. So we started off the playlist by looking at complex numbers, looking at the complex plane and then I moved over to look at indices in general so when we come on to the videos that are coming up in the series, you will see that a knowledge of indices is very useful indeed. During the videos on the law of indices, I've also shown you how Python can be used to find the roots and raised powers of numbers using this operator here and knowing that if you raise to a power that is itself a fraction, you can find roots of numbers. So the Python programs that I've used throughout in their own right might be useful for you so you can get a handle on raising values to various powers, knowing that the powers can also be responsible for finding the roots if those powers, if those exponents, if those indices are a fraction. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.